I have God's word in the word. And Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? So his first excuse was, basically, I'm nobody. Well, was he nobody? Well, he was anything but a nobody. In fact, he was the perfect person to carry that mission out. Because he was a Jew by birth, right, yet he was raised up in Pharaoh's household. So he knew the ways of the Egyptians. He could get in and out of the house of Pharaoh, and he'd go back to the Jews and talk to them too. He, he was in both worlds. He was the perfect person to carry off that negotiation. If you want someone to carry out a negotiation, you want somebody that has something in common with both sides, right? You don't want somebody who just takes one side, they're not going to get anywhere. You want somebody that understands both sides. So he was the perfect person, but he says, who am I that I should be the one to go to carry this mission out? I'm not the one. So God answers him in verse 12. He said, it doesn't matter who you are anyway. I'll be with thee. And shall be a token of thee, a sign of thee, that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God upon this mountain. In other words, he says, it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter who I am. And the proof will be that you're the right person for the job when they serve God right here on Mount Sinai. Moses is not through pulling the bushel basket out. He's going to pull another one out. 
Good evening, church. Welcome to Wednesday night Bible study. May the Lord add a blessing to you and yours. We'd like to welcome our sister, Sister Jojo, who been baptized into Christ tonight. Welcome. The angels are singing. Before our brother come before us, please mark the hymn books for our invitation song will be song number 800. Our invitation song, song number 800. Before our brother Brian come before us, let us sing 853. All three standards. Hymn number 853. When we all get to heaven. To heaven, let us sing. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansion bright and blessed, he pre prepared us a place when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing there will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory while we walk the pilgrim pathway cloud will over spread the sky but when traveling days are over not a shout or not a sign when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing there will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Let us then be true and faithful, trust in serving every day. Just one glimpse of him in glory will the toes of life repay when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing there will be when we all say Jesus will sing and shout for victory. Good evening, church. Once again, it's good to see everyone out this Wednesday evening. Uh, once again, the study of the portion of God's word and, of course, fellowship with one another and encourage uh, each other as we get from this life to glory. So once again, thank you, for Brother Timmons, for that song to kind of encourage us and to hear a thought from God's word tonight. Um, in middle and high school, I took what we used to call a class called home economics or life management skills, right? Some of y'all may remember these classes. So, of course, this course was kind of get you kind of in, you know, ready for adulthood, you know, kind of teach you to cook some breakfast items, you know, grits, eggs, some sausage or something like that, or bake, uh, learn how to bake a box cake, you know what I mean, out the, out the pack, you know, cookies or something like that. And you can quickly tell which uh, one of your classmates didn't know how to follow directions because they either burnt the item or they undercooked it or they just, you know, it just didn't come out looking correctly. And in one portion of the class, when I took it in eighth grade, um, I sold a pair of sh uh, shorts, gym shorts, and we called it back in the day, we called them jam shorts. That means they were like real, they were starting to make shorts where, you know, for guys, they was getting a little bit longer in the thigh. You can wear those short shorts no more, so that wasn't cool anymore, so you had to make them a little longer. And of course, when I made mine, mine turned out pretty good, I should say so myself. Um, they fit perfectly, and you know, they look sharp, and my teacher said, you see, Johnny, that's what happens when you follow the pattern. If you take your time, you cut everything out right and follow the pattern, they fit just right. 
And of course, I got a good couple wears out of those before, you know, outgrew them, of course, eventually. But um, that was something that um, we had to follow. It was a pattern. So for those food and clothing items that I just mentioned, of course, they serve a function for us uh, uh, physically. So what about the spiritual uh, patterns that have effect on us as believers as, you know, that has greater value on us eternally? So going all the way back to the Old Testament, of course, accounts, uh, when it comes to the patterns that God set for us, I think about, um, of course, Noah and the ark in Genesis chapter 6. Uh, Moses and the law in Exodus chapters 20 through 40. I know that's some, uh, a book that we're studying with the teen classes on Sunday mornings. God did not leave it up to man to just figure things out of, for, of, what, of what he was expecting from us to do you know, in reference to giving sacrifice and obeying and worshiping him. So once God asked for it and authorized it, that settled it. And of course, he gave everyone a pattern to follow for a specific purpose. Now, under New Testament living, God is still the same today. He gives us patterns to follow and to live by to keep us order in his kingdom. I'm reminded of the words of the Apostle Paul when he wrote the churches and different individuals when they, when they came to how to conduct themselves, the standard of living, and how to worship, um, and all those teachings through the Holy Spirit. If you would, just quickly have a few passages of Scripture if you would uh, turn with me to. The first one is 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, I want you to see if you can pick up on some some key words or some buzzwords that we'll kind of highlight through each of these uh, verses. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. 1 and 2. Of course, Paul writes to the church in Corinth in verse 1. He continues his letter here. He says, imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the traditions just as I delivered them to you. So, of course, keep those traditions, keep those ordinances. Now turn with me to Philippians chapter 3 and verse 17. Philippians 3, verse 17. Philippians 3, 17, Paul writes to the church at Philippi, Brethren, join in, my, in following my example, and note those who so walk, as you have us for a pattern. All right? Turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. Course, Paul writes to the church of uh, the Thessalonians here. Verse 13 says, But we are, about, we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth, to which he called you by our gospel for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 15, Therefore, brethren, stand fast, Hold the traditions which were taught, whether by word or our epistle. So, of course, they were taught some things to hold fast to, to believe in, adhere to, and follow the practice. Last scripture, uh, I want you to turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse number 13. 2 Timothy 1. Verse 13, Paul writes to Timothy, Behold fast, watch it again, the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed to you, keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. And then slide down to chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Same book. You therefore, my son, be strong in the Lord, be strong in grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. So Timothy, what else do I want you to do? I want you to hold fast to this pattern. I want you to follow and practice this pattern and these teachings which you've heard from me. I want you to commit them to not just any men, but faithful men, so they may teach others also. Here's a pattern here. So everywhere Paul, of course, went preaching and teaching and spreading the gospel, he always had patterns or traditions for them to follow. 
So if he wrote one church, something, of course, they would have to share that letter with another congregation. And uh, if he wrote a letter to another congregation, of course, they would have to share it with another congregation. In the example in Colossians chapter 4, 16, when he wrote them, he says, Now, when this epistle is read among you, see that it is read also to the church of the Laodiceans, and you likewise read the letter from Laodicea. So when Paul would write these letters, he was writing the same thing to keep that pattern everywhere. So, of course, they were familiar with those patterns that Paul both taught and demonstrated during their times with them when you read those letters. Because he knew that false teachers were going to come in and try to turn Christians away from the truth with some other gospels, some other old or false religious practices that were not authorized by God or the apostles. So I could just imagine the first century Christian when they would come together, they would have to constantly have to remind each other, hey, remember, we're in Christ now. We don't do that anymore. We ought to conduct ourselves in a certain manner when it comes to the matter of fill in the blank, loving one another, uh, how we live and how we conduct ourselves in this society. Oh, hey, the apostles didn't teach us that. We were warned to get such old wise fables and cunning and crafty words to draw men to themselves and not to Christ. So always constantly reminding themselves of what the apostles taught them. Now today with the completed word of God, he did not leave it up to us to decide how to honor him or how to worship him, just like you know the religious world think they do. Just, just make up something, whatever feel good to you, you do it. No, that's not the case. God, we, we were, God bless us with a book of patterns to follow. You know, how we always say in our society now, you know, of course, we look at our phones and there's an app for that. Well, for the body of Christ, the church of Christ, we have a pattern for that. This is why we come together each week to remind each other of the patterns, the expectation that God has for us through his word. I know Brother A.C. mentioned in his last sermon, uh, last time he spoke, you know, God's word is real easy to understand. If you have a pure and, and honest heart, you'll obey God. It's not hard to understand what thus says the Lord. You want to know how God is to be worshipped? We have a pattern for that. You want to know how to be a good husband, wife, child, family member, church family member? We have a pattern for that, too. You want to know how to live this life of pleasing to God and, of course, to make it from this life to glory? We have a pattern for that. And to someone who does not share our faith and our outside of Christ according to the New Testament scriptures and have an open mind and an honest heart, to want to know where their soul stands, their soul salvation stands when it comes to Christ, well, guess what? We have a pattern for that, too. As our sister Jojo obeyed that pattern. It was a simple pattern, real easy. She came by hearing the gospel, Romans 10, 17. She believed that gospel which she heard, Mark 16, 15, and 16. She repented of her sins, Acts 17, 30. She confessed Christ, Romans 10, 9, and 10. Of course, then she was baptized in water for the remission of her sins, Acts 2, 38. Pattern, framework to follow. Then she must continue, like all of us who were baptized into Christ, to be faithful unto death in order to receive our crown of life in the end, Revelations 2 and 10. So if you stand in need of prayer, or know someone it is, please come as we stand and sing the song of invitation. What a friend we have in Jesus. Oh. Our sins and grave to bear. Oh, our privilege is to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we have done for.
church say amen. amen. We thank uh, Brother Johnny, we thank you for that great lesson, that great reminder. He's such a great teacher. He always takes us back to those days, high school or whatever, and make his connection spiritually. And so we appreciate that so very much. God bless you and your family. Continue your great ministry. We're very proud of you. Great job on tonight. We have a few of our members who responded to the uh, message on tonight want to share those with you, we'll say a prayer on their behalf, and that prayer will also serve as our dismissal uh, for uh, tonight. Brother and Sister uh, Revere uh, want to share with us tonight uh, that uh, the two of them will be traveling this weekend to go to San Juan. And so we'll be praying for you all, praying for the trip, praying for the good things that you will bring to that area uh, as well. And we appreciate the opportunity that you give us uh, to pray for you all. Our brother Ed Ambrose has a card he sends up tonight. It's in reference to our sister Lisa. Uh, Lisa is recovering uh, from uh, thresh uh, and a very sore throat. Uh, she has laryngitis. But he did assure uh, me and want me to assure you that she is fine. This is not related to uh, her previous condition that we all went through with her. Uh, she's just going through this, and uh, we're hoping for Lisa to get better, and so we'll be praying for Lisa on tonight. Spoke to the uh, Powell family just before service. Unfortunately, they are um, having car trouble. Uh, towing is necessary, so they're in the process as we speak, uh, trying to address that issue uh, way in the downtown area, so we'll be praying for the Powers on tonight. Our sister Brenda Jones has a uh, message that she sends in tonight. Uh, she's um, asking for prayers for her neighbor, Miss Marsha Williams. She has a 16-year-old son by the name of J Jamari. Uh, he is autistic and is in need of assistance and training. She also wants us to pray for her neighbor, Dee, who has multiple illnesses. Also, Miss Louise Blossom for salvation and for me to get a positive result from my eye exam on tomorrow. In Jesus' name, she says. So we'll be praying, uh, Sister Brenda. Sister Brenda was valuable tonight. Uh, we got so excited about the baptism of JoJo uh, that we forgot to turn the camera on. And so the people in the, on the, in the back was, we can't see, we can't hear. So we had to explain to them what happened. But she walked us through it, was able to get our cameras lined up and everything. So thank you, Sister Brenda, for being so helpful tonight. Uh, on, the, uh, on the camera situation. Many people called back and they were able to see and we thank God for that. Our sister uh, Jackie Kern um, noted uh, today, earlier today, she says please continue to pray for my mother, that's Sister Hackett, myself, uh, and so for my husband. Now, you recall that uh, Sister Jackie is, is on the tail end of COVID that she has um, overcome. Well, they just found out today that her husband, Mr. Steve, has COVID. So we want to pray for Mr. Steve. We want to pray for uh, Sister Jackie and also Sister Hackett. Our sister Yolanda is, is asking us to pray uh, along with her concerning her son, uh, David. David had to travel. Uh, 
She's asking for traveling mercy. He had a quick travel to Seattle for his job this Sunday. She said she tried to make contact with him. They missed each other in the call. She suspect that he tried to call her from the airport, but she's asking for prayers for traveling mercy for our brother David. Oh, that's all that I showed. Do you have any more? That was the last one? Okay. Very good. Tonight, we're privileged to have uh, special visitors. Um, let me see if I can get the names right. Miss Helen is the mother. Miss Donna is the, is the daughter. And Ethan is the son. Got those names right? Great. We're glad to have you all. Thank you for visiting with us tonight. You're always welcome to come and be with us here at the Arlington Road Church of Christ. God bless you all. Thank you. Let's go to our Father in prayer, please. Most holy, righteous, and divine Father, which are in heaven, Father, we approach your mighty throne of grace on this day, giving thanks to you once again for being the great God that you are. Father, we love you. We thank you. We just always want to honor you in all that we do. No one has treated us better than you. No one has loved us like you. And for that, Father, we honor you and we praise you. We bless you. Thank you again for being the great God that you are. Thank you again for being the great I am. Father, the greatest gift that you gave us was your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who came down to this earth to do what no other can do, and that is to die in our places. And for that, Father, we are forever grateful for our sins being removed because of him, giving us a path back to you. So we bless his name above all names on this earth. We do love our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for the work of your Holy Spirit, giving us your precious word through men who wrote your thoughts. Father, they were able to have to this present day, they were able to study. Thank you so much for the power of your word. Father, we are thankful for the church that your son Jesus died for and left behind, that place where all men are to be. So we pray that you bless the church all over the world. Give her everything that she needs that the gospel may continue to go out. Thank you again for tonight. Thank you for our classes. Thank you for our teachers who have prepared themselves to teach, students who came to receive. We're just grateful again for all that, come, that have come tonight. Father, we thank you uh, for our devotional tonight through our deacon, Johnny Bryant. Thank you for the way that you have blessed him and his ministry. You've blessed his family. We just pray, Father, that you'll keep the evil one away from them, that they may continue to prosper, uh, continue to strive to be all they can be uh, in your service. Bless Johnny and his entire family. Father, again, we are honored that we have this opportunity to come before you to give thanks those who have responded on tonight. Father, we do ask that you be with the Powell family tonight and the, and the troubles that they're having with their automobile. Father, we know that um, these things can be very dangerous. I mean, I, whenever a tow truck is called and all the things that take place, just the way people drive, they're not very cautious. So we pray for them tonight that you be with them, that you'll keep them safe, that you allow them to reach their home tonight safely. And so we do pray for them on tonight. Father, we join the Revere family tonight, Brother Matthew and Sister Mary, as they're making preparation to travel this weekend to San Juan, Puerto Rico. We just pray that you'll be with them, that you'll bless them in their trip, keep them safe on their way there, keep them safe while they're there. And then, Father, when they make their minds up to come back this way, we pray that you'll be with them. We know that they're going to do a great work. We just pray that you'll bless them in their ministry, uh, for they were greatly encouraged. The church there uh, in uh, San Juan, and so we ask that you bless them, bless all of them, uh, give them everything that they need, that you bless them. Thank you again, Father, for this opportunity that we have to pray for Brother Matthew and Sister Mary on tonight. Father, we pray for our Sister Lisa tonight. We ask that you be with her. Uh, we know that she is suffering tonight uh, from a very sore throat. Laryngitis is, is a part of what she's going through tonight as well. So we pray that you be with her, uh, that she'll be able to relax, rest, and do those things that's uh, been given to her. Uh, that her voice will be relaxed, that she'll be able to return to her speaking, be able to return to her normal way of life. Thank you again for just the way that you have blessed Lisa. Thank you again for all that you brought her through. And so, Father, again, we're just grateful that we have this opportunity to pray for our sister uh, on tonight. Father, again, we pray for our brother Calvin Payne. He was here tonight. He, he even uh, participated in the service. Uh, we know that he is soon removed from his uh, procedure. And tonight he had to cut it short, that he had to go back home for discomfort. 
and some things that he needed to deal with. So we pray that you be with him and Sister Jackie on tonight, that you bless him all the way home, that our brother will continue to recuperate and get better. And we're grateful again for the opportunity that we have to pray uh, for both uh, Calvin and our sister Jackie uh, as well. Father, uh, our sister Brenda give us the opportunity tonight to join her uh, in prayer. Uh, Father, her list is extensive tonight. We're grateful again that we have this opportunity to join her in prayer. We pray that you continue to be uh, with her neighbor, Ms. Marsha Williams. We ask that you be with her 16-year-old son as well, Jamari, uh, for the assistance and training that is needed for him. We just pray that you give them patience. We pray for all those resources out there that they be able to help them. And so we're grateful that we have this opportunity that our sister give us to pray for her neighbor, Ms. Marsha Williams, and also her son, Jamari. We pray for her, her, her neighbor, Dee, that you'll be with her who has multiple illnesses. We just pray that you'll bless her at this time, bless her doctors and all those who are trying to help her. And we're grateful again that our sister gives us the opportunity to pray for her neighbor, Miss D. We pray for Miss Louise Blossom. Uh, our sisters ask us to pray for salvation for her. Uh, we know that um, the gospel has been taught and now she's waiting uh, for her response. So we pray for Miss Louise that she'll continue to give her space and time, allow her to live, that she continue to receive her teaching that she may indeed one day obey the gospel. We pray for also for our sister Brenda. We're praying for positive results from our eye exam on tomorrow. We pray that you'll be with her, that you'll bless her. And we thank you again, Father, that we can join our sister in prayer uh, on tonight. Father, we do pray for our, our young brother David, that you be with him, who suddenly had to leave for his job to travel to Seattle. We pray that his trip has been safe. We pray for the time that he will be there. And then, Father, when it's time for him to turn his face back to where he needs to go to be his home, we pray that you be with him once again. We're grateful again that we have this opportunity to pray for him on tonight. Again, Father, we are grateful for our visitors as always. We ask that you will bless Miss Helen in a very special way. We thank you, Father, that they have uh, saw fit to come our way. And we pray that we have been friendly, pray that we have been warm towards them. They are members of your son's body, and we're grateful. We pray for Miss Donna tonight. Ask that you'll be with her, that you'll bless her. Thank you again for them coming. And we pray for young Ethan as well, that you continue to bless him, all that he stands in need of as well. We're just grateful again, Father, we can call on your holy name, that we're able to thank you for so much that you have done for us. Thank you, Father, for what you allow us to witness on today. Our sister Jojo, who has been uh, learning of your word uh, and very faithful uh, in, your, in her classes, uh, very faithful in the service that we have there at Deerwood. And so, Father, we know she did, as we all have to do, work out our own salvation. And then, Father, as she came to her decision and knew what she had to do, she had the strength to do it, Father. And for that, we know the angels are rejoicing. We are so grateful for our sister, very proud of her. So we ask that you bless Jojo, bless her family. We know that the evil one is not going to let up. So we pray as a church uh, family that we will rally around her, encourage her, and let her know that we love her, that we're there for her, and we're again ready to continue to pray uh, and be with her on tonight. Father, again, we are grateful for our sister Jackie uh, Kern. We pray that you continue to be with her. We're grateful, Father, that uh, she has uh, allowed us to continue to join her in prayer. We know that she's on the end of her recovery. We pray that you will bless her, that she will be able to come through completely. We pray for Sister Hackett and ask that you continue to be with her. Father, she is such an inspiration to all of us, so we're grateful again that we have this opportunity to pray for Sister Hackett. Father, now we pray for her husband, Mr. Steve, who has now contracted uh, uh, also COVID. We pray that the things that will be done for him will be helpful, that he'll be able to return to his normal health, and we so look for the opportunity again that we'll be able to see him. But thank you again, Father, for allowing us to pray uh, for all of these individuals. And Father, we're just grateful again for tonight. We're grateful that you have blessed us. Now, uh, shortly, we'll be getting into our cars. We'll be heading home. And we pray that you be with us, that you allow us to reach safely. We especially pray for those who be carrying our young ones, that you allow them to, go, to get home safely as well. Thank you again for being the great God that you are, Father. Please forgive us of our sins, each and every one of us, for we know that we fall short and we need your grace and your mercy. Please forgive us. Thank you again for loving us. For it's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that we do pray. Amen. Amen. I believe we called everyone. Cover. Great. Okay, just a few announcements that we'd like to make, and then we'll be dismissed for tonight. This, these are our announcements for September 27th. On September the 28th, uh, that will be, of course, tomorrow. 
the prison ministry benefit dinner will be at the University City Church of Christ, 4626 Northwest 8th Street in Gainesville, Florida. They've asked us already to RSVP. That time has passed to Ms. Sandra Carter. Uh, there is a phone number, 352-317-3308, or you can text at that number as well. If you're still interested in going, I'm pretty sure they'll be able to receive, uh, receive you, but that dinner is scheduled for tomorrow. On September the 30th, this coming Saturday, will be our area-wide men's breakfast. The time is 8 o'clock a.m. The place will be the Orange Blossom Restaurant. 14329 Beach Boulevard here in Jacksonville. Uh, that zip code is 32250. That is uh, in that big lot uh, uh, shopping center area. Great place. We met uh, at our last breakfast. Great food, great time, It'd be great setting, atmosphere. So we welcome uh, our brothers to come and be a part of that. This is Arlington turn to host. So it would be nice if we can show up in numbers. Please give me a call and let me know if you can make it. We we'll look forward to seeing you this coming Saturday at 8 o'clock a.m. Also on September the 30th, Lake Forest Church of Christ will have their Ladies' Day. That's 950 Edgewood Avenue West here in Jacksonville, 32208. The phone number is 904-764-0762. The theme is Be Joyful, Patient, and Faithful. The speaker will be Sister Tracy Sproul. She's from the Palm Beach Lakes Church of Christ Breakfast Start at 8 o'clock a.m. Again, that's this coming Saturday um, at the time again. It's 8 o'clock a.m. for their breakfast. On October the 1st, Deerwood Place weekly worship service uh, will continue. That's at 8700 AC Skinner Parkway here in Jacksonville. The time is 3 o'clock p.m. that we have worship service over there. If you have any questions at all, you can see myself or Brother Calvin Payne. Uh, if you'd like to participate or support please see us. We always will welcome you. It's a great time that we're having over there. October the 1st through the 4th, Polishing the Pulpit uh, slash Spark. It's a great program. It's going to be at the Lakeside Church of Christ. The Arlington Church of Christ, us, we are co-sponsor with Lakeside. Their address over there is 2539 Moody Avenue. They're in Orange Park, 32073. The phone number is 904 264 2463. There is a flyer on the bulletin board in the back. It shows the daily agenda and classes, and it's a great event, and you want to be a part of it. It, it goes through the day uh, for, the, uh, for October the 1st through the 4th. You know, the, 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 the majority of the day will have uh, select speakers from many places, great speakers. If you want additional information, you can go info at polishingthepulpit.com. That's info at polishingthepulpit.com. On October the 2nd, this coming Monday, 6.30 p.m., we will have our Arlington Beehive. That's our forum where we come together uh, to be encouraged and to encourage others. That phone number is 716-427-1360. As says code is 1002423. This is also on our website. If you want this number, you can pull it up and you can see it as well. On October the 5th will be the monthly Elders Deacons Zoom meeting at 7 o'clock p.m. 7 p.m. October the 5th, Elders Deacons meeting. October the 6th and 7th will be the Ladies Fall Encampment at the Central Florida Bible Camp, 23813 Country Road 44A in Eustis, Florida, 32736. The theme is Soul Sisters. Register online if you like at www.cfbiblecamp.org. www.cfbiblecamp.org. Questions, contact Ms. Beth Boone. She leaves an uh, uh, email address. It's Evanson, E V A N, uh, on fire at AOL.com. Evans on fire at AOL.com. Dot com. October the 8th through the 11th will be Oceanside Church of Christ Gospel Meeting, 1025 Snug Harbor Court, Atlantic Beach, 32233. The theme is Jesus the Answer. That's a question mark. Guest speaker would be Brother Joe Wells. For dates, time, and topics, you can go on their website at www.oscoc.us and you can get that information for the Oceanside Church of Christ 
gospel meeting. Before we close, I do have a card or two that I want to read uh, to you from Sister Shirley Bashu. Uh, she says, thank you, Arlington, for another week of the Beehive Bible study and worship. Thank you, uh, Brother Terry, for Wednesday evening uh, lesson. Brother Jerry, I'm sorry, Brother Jerry, for Wednesday evening lesson. Thank you, Elder Davis, for the lesson on this past uh, morning, Lord's Day. Thank you, uh, AC, for the two lessons earlier. Thank you all, the brothers and sisters who participated doing God's work. She says, my prayer always are for the elders, deacons, ministers, and members. Glory be to God for all uh, that we do, prayers received, and Christian love, Sister Shirley Bashu. That's one card one week, and then she sends another one before. Thank you, Arlington, for another week. Beehive Bible study uh, and worship. Glory to God. Thank you to my brothers and sisters and all who uh, participate. Have a great week. Uh, again, prayers for the elders, deacons, ministers, members, and Christian love, Shirley Bashu. Sister Shirley, we love you, and we thank you so much uh, for these cards of encouragement. You're always uh, uplifting us, and we appreciate you so very much. Family, don't forget to go over and greet our new sister in Christ, Jojo. We're very proud of you, Jojo. Very proud of you. The angels are rejoicing for what you've done tonight, and we appreciate it so very much, and we know God is going to bless you. She's a very warm person, very loving person, and you will love knowing um, Jojo. We thank you so much. Please be safe going home tonight. We look forward to seeing you again on the first day of the week, and we may continue to worship in spirit and truth. Don't forget to meet Miss Helen, Miss Donna, and Ethan as well. God bless you all. Thank you. <laughs>